7.1 notes, solving systems of two equations. This is mostly going to be review. Of algebra one. And two. I think you go yeah. over it again in algebra two. But yeah. uh, stick with us anyway just to make sure you know what you're doing. And there are a few things that will trip you up. So Right. Like example two is not an algebra one question. Right. But let's, let's but just start off easy let's with do it. example one, solve using the substitution method. That method means you take one equation and solve it for a variable and then plug it into the other one. Substitute it into the other one. So we can solve either for x or y. doesn't matter. Do you have a doesn't preference? doesn't matter at all. Uh, how about let's solve for, for x just for kicks and giggles. By the way, while Mrs. Stevenson's working this out, uh, substitution is a skill that is very, very handy when you get into calculus. And this is where the base for what you will do as a u sub later, the base of that comes from being familiar with this. So this is a really important thing to take with you into calculus. Right. Being able to substitute things and, and see things like that, super helpful. So I substituted the four minus y into the x for the first equation. So now to finish solving this, I distributed. Now I have like terms that I have to add. And just put them all together. Now it's a, an algebra one question and we, and we solve that sucker for y and, and we'll get a final answer. Now you have but, five we'll, y but we'll only be partial. Uh, 14? Is that right? 22 minus 8 is 14? Uh, I believe so, yes. Oh no, a fraction. Oh my gosh. It'll be alright. We'll live. So y is negative 14 over 5. So we take that and we plug it back in to find what x is. Typically, if you're using substitution, there is an easiest place to do that because we already mm -hmm. solved for x earlier. Right. So if we put that in like a so... We just got to change, change. Change, change. Click, click, or whatever. Whatever. For those of you that. Do uh, that. This four needs to have a five on the bottom, so that's going to make it be twenty over five. Plus fourteen over five. Right. Which gives us. Thirty-four. And what we've done here is we have found the place where the line, two x minus three y equals twenty-two, and the line, x plus y equals four have intersected. Right, that's what we that's one of the the things about solving these systems is you are finding points of intersection between different graphs. So, example 2. It's going to be the same, but now it's a little bit different because if you'll notice, we've got y equals and hey, we've got y equals on both of these. There you go. So, so it would actually be really easy to plug these into your graphing calculator, right. but it does ask us to do it algebraic. Right. So if y equals negative x squared, we can put that right here where this y That's is. That's correct. Or we could write it the other way around, either way. But if they're already both solved for y, don't be silly and solve something for no, x. No, no, don't, yeah, don't do that, don't do that. To solve this algebraically, this was a while ago that we did this. We want to get everything on one side of our equation. Right. So 0 equals x cubed plus 2x squared. And then factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case would be the x squared. Right. We can't do the 2 because there's only 1. Yeah, this has a 2, but this doesn't. Right. So you factor out the x squared, and that leaves you with x plus 2. And then you set each part of that equal to 0. Right. So that you get x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. And if you can remember way back when, uh, we have multiplicity here at Right, zero. we do have multiplicity at zero, so that's where the graph theoretical, well, but we're substituting, so yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if that works out that way. But, but we do technically get an answer of zero twice. It just right. doesn't matter that Right, we get it doesn't it matter. Twice. And again, this is where these two graphs are meeting. Are meeting, is like that intersect each other. x equals zero and x equals negative two, so we right. need to go and plug in the y value, plug in these to find the y values that go uh, with them. Right. So I would I pick the second definitely one. Definitely pick the second one because there's only one thing there to do. So when I plug in zero, I get zero. So one of our answers Excuse me. is zero a, comma zero. Excuse me, I had a I sneeze. It's this wind today. Yeah. It's blowing my allergies crazy. Plug in negative two. Oh, and I missed out on the negative that's in front. Yeah, negative, the negative isn't, parentheses, negative and then, two. And then the negative two is your actual number. It goes in the parentheses. Right. So negative two when you square it is positive four, but there's a negative in front. So that makes it negative four. So there you go. So negative two, negative four is our second point. You might think about going ahead and putting that in and seeing if you feel like that's legitimately what your graph is showing you. If you want to, no big deal. It's good and it's good practice. Good practice. Yeah. Example three: solve using the elimination method. That's, this is a little different. It is, and I actually most of the time find the well, 
yeah, most of the time find the elimination method, the easier way to go. What you're trying yes. to do is eliminate either X or Y. And so to do that, you multiply either one or both equations or neither. If by a nice, number. By a number so that you end up with the same number in front of either X, both when of the X's or the Y's. When you add the columns up. Yeah, when you add the columns up, they should get rid of each other. So what we're saying, we could easily do this for x or for y, but I'm, I'm thinking, why not multiply the first equation by 2? That'll give us a 2y here, so that right. when we add them, those That's will cancel out. That's a brilliant, uh, brilliant plan. So, so 4x plus 2y equals 20. Now, one of the most common mistakes to make when you're doing this is... To not multiply all the to, way through. Is to not multiply all the way. You'll forget that the 10 also needs to be multiplied right. by 2. So and, and We're not allowed to just put a 2 somewhere willy-nilly in an equation. We have to do no. this to everything in there. Right, right. Now, add these equations together. So 5x. 5x. 0. Okay, 0y, so we'll skip that. And 15. 5 plus 20. 15. Divide by 5. And x equals 3. Yeah. That's nice. Now we have to plug back in, and it doesn't matter where we do. I think it doesn't. So that's that's the beauty of this one is it, you can't go wrong when you plug back in. Right. Typically, it's easiest to plug it into one of your first equations because typically those have smaller numbers. Right. So I picked the very first one here because I know the y doesn't have a coefficient, and I figured that'll make solving easier. Right. So 6 plus y equals 10. So y is uh, 4. That's right. And again, that's where the lines intersect. So we're finding a point of intersection when we solve these systems. Absolutely. Yeah. More to come in more just to, a More to come. Now, there are some special cases that happen with uh, these graphs or equations that sometimes you don't get an, a point of intersection. Right. Which would be no solution. You get some really wacky thing that occurs. Yeah. Sometimes they just don't intersect. That would be no solution. Or sometimes they intersect so well, like they overlap and they are the exact same yeah, graph. They, that's really, really well intersected. Yes. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's a really great intersection is if you intersect all the time. Um, so that is the case of infinitely many solutions. And right. so the way that you know which case is happening is... On your answer, if you get a variable like x, if x equals 5, it solves normally and your graphs intersect somewhere, 5 comma something, okay? Right. If you end up with an answer of no solution, what that looks like is that the variables will cancel out as you're working through it, and what you were left with is a false statement. So you might end up with something like 0 equals 5. Right. That's, not, that's absolutely not true, so don't even try and justify that. Right. The other thing with that one that comes up where students make mistakes is they'll say that negative 1 equals 1, and they'll let that one slide. Yeah, but no, that but negative 1 does not equal they, they, 1. They're not the same, yeah. and they never will be. Yeah. So... Uh, I said on this graphically that it's parallel lines. That's if you have two lines. You could have two other graphs. Like you could have a circle and a line and they not intersect. Right. So you would have no solution there. Two parabolas that might, may not ever intersect. Yeah. So infinitely many solutions, what happens is the variables cancel out and what you're left with is a true statement. So what happens there is you're allowed to plug in any number you want and you'll still end up with, an, with a true answer. And so you'll end up with like 5 equals 5 or something. Or 17 equals 17 or, or even 0 equals 0. That's right. a true statement. Right. So on examples 4 and 5 here, it lets us pick using substitution or elimination. These are going to give us either no solution or infinitely many solutions just to make sure we understand what's going to happen. The first one I'd like to substitute just for practice and then the second one eliminate. You know, that sounds, that sounds great. This, one of each. Yeah, this is actually the better one to substitute on because if you subtract 2x over to this side. We have a y equals y statement. Equals. Yeah. yeah. And if you'll notice on the example five, there's going to be more to it than just subtract the number over. Like if you just eyeball it, you don't have to solve it out. But if you look at example five, there's more than just subtract right. a number. It, trying to get x by itself right. or y by itself is right. going to give you It's um, going to take fractions. at least two steps, yeah. Uh, and so let's distribute. So that's negative 14 plus 4x equals negative 14. So notice what happens here. We have negative 4x plus 4x, which is 0. Hey, those things could go away. So if we just go ahead and write this down, negative 14 equals negative 14. Is that true? That's true. So, and, and so if it's true, then that means that these are the exact same line. Right. So that means there's infinitely many solutions. Okay. And it's okay to get a statement like this. Like yes, if you get a happens. statement like this, don't freak out and think you got the problem wrong. Right. Uh, on the second one here, if we do elimination, I notice that these numbers are smaller, so that's where I should multiply. I'm going to multiply by 5, try to get rid of the x's. Good plan. And with elimination, if it's an issue, it's going to be really quickly obvious that we've got a 
problem here. Did I do that right? I think so. You multiplied everything by five, so that's okay. good. So that goes, that goes, that goes. Oh, this one's infinitely many solutions, oh, too. Oh, look at there, infinitely I, many. What did I do? I thought one of these was going to be well, no solution. Well, I, I thought one w was going to be, but you did everything correctly. So that, that one also, zero equals zero, is infinitely many solutions. So if you get that, don't sweat it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. If you, if you don't want infinitely many solutions, take the bottom equation and make, make it equal 10. Yeah. Yeah, and then solve it out and, and then, see what and happens. And then solve it out and see what happens. You'll get zero equals something 15 or yeah something like that 35 or something right so and that would be no solution yeah. and that that's not true yeah hey example six last example let's solve the system graphically graphically so we have to in order to put these in our graphing calculator solve for y unless you have an inspire and in, oh inspire you don't have to. i believe in i'll just double check real quick okay well i'll get started on solving okay. for y on this first one we start off by subtracting x squared so y squared equals 9 minus x squared. To get rid of the squared, we square root both sides. But this is the tricky part. You have to... Plus or minus that sucker, or you'll be in trouble. Right, which means when you type this into your calculator, you're going to have y1 equal, and you're going to put nothing, square root 9 minus x squared. For y2, you'd have to put negative square root of 9 minus x squared. Look at that. You can, you do, a, you can do a those... circle. How did you do that? You just, you just go into menu and choose function. And then you backed out it, of the y equals? Yeah, and it takes it out of y equals. I'll put a video up later. Okay. So, uh, but for 84s and 83s, this is the way to go. is to solve for y, and you'll have two entries. This is a circle, by the way, with a radius, nice, of 3. Okay, that's what's happening here. The second one is a line, so we'll have to solve for y. Uh, divide by negative 6. The beautiful thing about this is, if you're going to solve this on your calculator, no matter which calculator you use, you don't necessarily need to reduce everything down. Like, for example, Mrs. Stevenson put, right here, she I could, could have just left in. it. Yeah, yes. that's true. But my, so, um, you know, but my... But she's so brilliant that it just naturally occurs to her I was going to go OCD okay. mathematically. I was so going to go with brilliant. It sounds math OCD, yeah. So uh, these three things we put into our calculator. And so if you do that... It should look something like this. Wow, where'd that picture come from? It appeared as if from nowhere. It did. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So the x squared plus y squared equals 9 is this circle with a radius of 3. Here's our line that goes through that. And here are two points right here. Those are the intersections. And so on your calculator, remember to find points of intersection. You do second, second trace, which is the calc menu. And you go down to intersect. intersect. And with this situation, it's kind of tricky because both of these are going to be on the bottom part of your graph. I believe so, the yes. The y2. Mm -hmm. And so whenever it asks you, like, first curve, second curve, you need to make the first curve be the bottom. And you do that by up and down, up and arrows. down arrows. So this can be kind of tricky. This... Uh, this one you should be able to like eyeball pretty easily. The yeah. three comma zero, it may give you issues if you try to do the intersection. It I might, know, but I, I think it'll weird. be okay. But this one right here, as long as you pick the bottom part of the circle and the line, it should give you, and then go close to this dot whenever it asks you to guess, mm -hmm. should give you that one pretty easily. So those are our two answers right yeah, here. Yeah, right, right there. What, I don't know what happened. What happened on that? Um, that I don't know. Okay. There are some some word problems in this section. I know that there's one that talks about perimeter. Remember that perimeter is two width plus two lengths, right? Yep. Or yep. an area, and we're talking about an, a rectangle. Rectangles, yes. And the area of a rectangle then would be length times width. Right. If depending on what information they give us, we potentially have a system of equations here. Right. So and, and maybe both of one. those uh, could come up at the same time potentially. Right. Right. Yeah, so um, you'd solve one of them for, like, say, W, plug it into the other one. And right. in general, I feel like I find it easier to, to solve this one for W or L and plug it in here. Then you've got a nice polynomial. Right. If you do it the other way around, you end up with a You could end up with some really weird stuff, yeah. Thing. So that's yeah. all we have for you. There you go. Code word, by the way. Uh, let's go code word for the day. You want to? We got a good idea? I, bananas. bananas. All right. Code bananas word today is bananas. All right.